knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> Turn your dial to find the frequency of the past. Captain Midnight. With the classic stories of mysteries, sci-fi, thrillers, and suspense are found waiting to be heard once again. Another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective. You'll find a variety of those stories here, in their original form, where each episode takes you to another place or time. The Man of Bronze, Doc Savage. But only when you find the mystery frequency. Available everywhere. The Shadow Knows. On the night of September 7, 1984, Robert Marshall of Toms River, New Jersey, and his wife Maria were driving north on New Jersey's Garden State Parkway from a casino in Atlantic City when Robert said he felt a vibration in one of the car's tires. He would later recount to police that when he pulled off the highway in a dimly lit picnic area to tend to the tire, he was then knocked unconscious by a blow to the back of his head and approximately $15,000 worth of casino winnings was stolen from him. When he regained consciousness, he found Maria's lifeless body lying across the front seat of their car. She had been shot in the head. From the south shore of Lake Erie, this is Great Lakes True Crime. Before we go any further, I want to address that this episode takes place in New Jersey, which, if you're not familiar with U.S. geography, is not part of the Great Lakes. Just taking an artistic liberty to tell this story, which is an important one, and that's the beauty of not being beholden to a network or anyone else for your independent podcast. Robert Marshall and Maria Pazinski began dating in the early 1960s. Maria loved Robert's outgoing personality, but her conservative parents took a little more convincing. Eventually, though, they came around and gave their blessing to the couple, who were married in December 1963 at St. Adalbert's Church in Philadelphia. Robert had attended Villanova University in Philadelphia and managed to graduate despite being a less than stellar student. After college, he joined the U.S. Navy, determined to make something of himself. While in the Navy, Robert Maria discovered the fast-growing community of Toms River, New Jersey. In 1973, the couple bought a brand new house there with an in-ground 40-foot swimming pool. It was there that they put down roots, having three sons and joining the prestigious Toms River Country Club. Living a life of luxury was important to Robert, who had grown up as the oldest of five children of an alcoholic father who dragged the family around from place to place, always trying to stay a step ahead of the many bill collectors. He was also motivated by the fact that Maria had grown up in a well-to-do family, and it was important to Robert that he be able to prove that he could provide such a life for Maria and the children. So Robert worked hard at his insurance sales job with a Philadelphia-based company called Provident Mutual. In fact, in his first year there, he earned a $12,000 bonus for selling more than $2 million worth of insurance policies. And remember, this is in the 1960s. To celebrate the success, he went out and bought an 18-foot boat that they named the Double Down. The couple were also fond of driving their Cadillac down to Atlantic City, which had recently legalized casino gambling. Robert would spend hundreds of dollars a night gambling at the blackjack tables, sometimes even thousands of dollars. Over time, however, the couple grew apart. 
Maria devoted most of her energy to raising the kids and running the household. She preferred to stay home while Robert still enjoyed the nightlife. They both made it work for a while, though, until the 4th of July weekend in 1983. It was then that the couple were at a friend's barbecue where Robert met and became smitten with a married assistant principal at a local high school named Saran Kroshauer. The two soon began a secretive love affair. After about a year of sneaking around, Robert and Saran decided that they should leave their respective spouses and move in together. During that time period, Robert apparently said that he wished Maria wasn't around to stand in his way, and he would later allege that Saran actually provided him with the name of a local man that could make his wish come true, essentially someone who could murder his wife. It was apparently a casual conversation, as casual as such a conversation like this could be, but that idea never left Robert's mind. Right around this time, Maria found out about her husband's torrid affair. But that's not the only bad news she discovered. She also learned that their family was in massive debt due to Robert's irresponsible gambling and other reckless spending. What's worse, she found out that Robert had forged her signature on a $100,000 home equity loan, and he also had an $80,000 mortgage on an office he had. Maria, of course, was furious when she found this out. She was so mad that she clandestinely hired a private investigator to find out everything that Robert was up to. It wasn't long, however, before Robert had been tipped off that Maria may have hired a private detective to look into his affairs. He knew that, at this point, he could lose everything. Not only his wife, but his home, business, and reputation in the community. Robert decided that he needed to take action. He eventually met a man, originally from Louisiana, named Billy Wayne McKinnon, who offered to help out. Billy sensed that Robert was desperate and he could probably make some money off of him. So Robert, Billy McKinnon, and another man from Louisiana named Robert Cumber met up in an Atlantic City casino in June 1984. At the meeting, Robert paid McKinnon $7,000, supposedly just to follow Maria and see what she was up to. So, at this point, both husband and wife were spying on each other. It's not the sign of a great marriage. But this arrangement was quite different, as Robert also agreed that the two men from Louisiana would be paid $65,000 to split if Maria was murdered as soon as possible. That was a lot of money, about $200,000 in today's money. Robert's arrangement didn't work out too smoothly, though. Instead of taking the $7,000 and following Maria around as he was supposed to do, Billy McKinnon quickly left New Jersey and headed back to Louisiana with the cash. About a month later, Billy drove back to New Jersey to try and shake some more money out of Robert, which he did. Robert gave Billy another $7,000, and the two agreed that Maria would be murdered in the parking lot of a local diner. Not surprisingly, Billy failed to follow through with the plan and instead headed back to Louisiana once again. This time, though, was a little different. That August, Billy was told that someone else had been hired to kill him for not following through with the deal he had with Robert. Apparently, Robert had enough of Billy. Or maybe not, because the following month, in September 1984, the two met up again. This time, they met at a picnic area along a busy highway in New Jersey known as the Garden State Parkway. They decided that this picnic area would be nice and dark at night, and a perfect place to murder Maria. On the night of September 6, 1984, Robert and Maria Marshall drove down to the Harris Casino in Atlantic City where they enjoyed a nice dinner and a few hours of gambling. 
A little after midnight, they headed home in their yellow Cadillac. But Billy McKinnon and Larry Thompson, who was the man Robert had paid to kill Billy the previous month, lied in wait at the Oyster Creek picnic area, which is that dark area they had selected along the Garden State Parkway. While driving north, Robert pretended that he thought the back tire was going flat, so he pulled into that picnic area where Thompson ran out of a brushy area and murdered Maria as she sat in the Cadillac. He also delivered a hard blow to the head of Robert as planned. He then slashed a tire on the car before he and McKinnon took off. Police were called, and upon arrival, they discovered Robert with a blow to the head that required five stitches. They also found the lifeless body of Maria in the front passenger seat of the Cadillac. Robert's story was that he pulled over to fix a flat tire, and a random criminal came out to mug them and assaulted him while killing Maria. In the days after the horrible incident, many people who knew Robert were very suspicious including neighbors, police, and even his two older sons. It seems that Robert's story about what happened kept changing. Plus, he wasn't the type of guy that would try to change his own flat tire. When word got out about the affair with Saran, suspicions grew even more. For her part, Saran told investigators that Robert had taken a long-distance call from Louisiana at her apartment one night. He claimed it was in regard to a gambling debt. She had her doubts, though, and also became suspicious that she may be having an affair with a murderer. The relationship fizzled out at this point. Murder tends to put a damper on things. Police continued their investigation, and Robert must have known that authorities were closing in on him. He actually checked into a hotel room in northern New Jersey and recorded a suicide tape, although he did not go through with the suicide. It's not entirely clear if Robert actually intended to go through with it or if he made the tape in some effort to show mental instability. Marshall was eventually arrested for the murder of his wife on December 19, 1984. The prosecution publicly theorized that Robert orchestrated the murder-for-hire scheme so that he could collect on a $1.5 million insurance policy. Police also arrested three of Marshall's accomplices for conspiracy to commit murder. They were 47-year-old Robert Cumber of Bossier City, Louisiana, 49-year-old James Davis of Shreveport, Louisiana, and 42-year-old Billy Wayne McKinnon of Greenwood, Louisiana, who was also charged with murder. After a six-week trial, Robert Marshall was convicted of capital murder. He was sentenced to death by lethal injection. Cumber, who had introduced Marshall to McKinnon, was convicted as an accomplice and sentenced to life in prison, although he was released in 2006. McKinnon cooperated with prosecutors and pleaded guilty to a charge of conspiracy He was sentenced to five years in prison and only served one year. McKinnon testified during the trial that he was hired by Marshall to kill Maria and that he and the gunman, Larry Thompson, had in fact been hiding at that Garden State Parkway rest stop where Thompson had committed the murder. Thompson actually managed to be found not guilty of murder in 1986 after testimony from family members stated that he was in Louisiana at the time of the killing. In April 2014, however, while in prison for other crimes, Thompson admitted to having committed the murder of Maria Marshall. With America's prohibition on double jeopardy, though, it didn't matter. He could not be retried for Maria's murder after being found not guilty. It's unlikely, though, that Thompson will ever be let out of prison, as his earliest possible parole date under his current sentence is 2071. Although Robert Marshall had been sentenced to death, his death penalty was overturned on an appeal in 2004 through the U.S. District Court. 
The Third Circuit Court of Appeals upheld the decision in 2005, and the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear an appeal by the New Jersey Attorney General's Office. After that, New Jersey prosecutors declined to retry the death penalty phase of the case, as Robert's conviction still stood. He just could no longer get the death penalty, which the state of New Jersey was very unlikely to carry out anyway. Later that year, in August 2006, Marshall was resentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in eight years. This made Marshall, who had been locked up since his arrest in 1984, eligible for parole in 2014. A parole board hearing was eventually scheduled for March 2015, and Robert's two older sons, Roby and Christopher, planned to oppose their father's parole at the hearing. Their younger brother, John, on the other hand, had always believed in Robert's innocence and was going to speak in favor of his father. But Robert would never get his parole hearing. Several months after suffering a stroke, Robert Marshall died in Southwoods State Prison in Bridgeton, New Jersey on February 21, 2015. Maria Pazinski Marshall is interred at St. Joseph Catholic Cemetery in Toms River, New Jersey. The inscription on her headstone reads, quote, Our greatest glory consists not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Unquote. And that's all for this episode of Great Lakes True Crime. You can say hi to us on Facebook and on the X. Just search for Great Lakes True Crime. You can also check out the show notes for sources and more information. Please send any thoughts or case suggestions to greatlakestruecrime at gmail.com. And if you like the show, please give us a positive review and encourage your friends to subscribe. We need new subscribers as that really helps us out. For Great Lakes True Crime, this has been Steve, your host and producer. Thanks for listening, guys.